or John for English speaking uh, people. <coughs> I'm responsible for uh, TV everywhere products in Canal Digital and also behavioral data. Canal Digital is a uh, Nordic satellite operator uh, with the uh, biggest markets in Norway and Sweden, and also delivering TV in Denmark and Finland. I'm really happy to be here today and talk about data-driven TV and how Canal Digital is actually working with building a personalized user experience. But I don't think it's possible to actually talk about data-driven TV these days without mentioning uh, GDPR. And both Magnus uh, before me actually mentioned it as well. Uh, we, as everybody else, have had a quite stressful springtime trying to figure out if we are compliant or not and actually managing to be compliant. We have cleaned up a lot and we also build solutions to be transparent and open on the data we collect and process towards our customers, allowing customers to opt out but building value in the personalization to make it attractive not to opt out from uh, data processing and collecting. Uh, and we will, of course, continue to focus on, on GDPR in the way forward. So, the video landscape is evolving. Unlimited options and device fragmentation makes it more relevant, more complex for us to stay relevant for the consumers. And as we know, digital consumers, cord shavers, cord cutters, are less loyal than the traditional TV subscriber. And another issue is that there's no real data standardization between the operators and between the broadcasters, which makes it even more complex and difficult for advertisers to reach their viewers. viewers. TV and online video measurements, which Magnus touched upon, uh, mentioning MMS and Comscore in Sweden, uh, and TNS uh, Kantar in Norway and Denmark, does part of this work, but it doesn't really leverage all the customer insights and the data operators are actually collecting and are sitting on today. And I will get a little bit more into how we actually are working on and what we are thinking about that uh, moving forward in the presentation. So how does Canal Digital work to actually, what are our focus areas? We are building a personalized customer journey, not only for addressable TV or content recommendations, but we have three main focus areas. We want to build a personalized and flexible subscription and packaging models, making it possible to actually recommend to the subscriber that based on your viewing habits or your interests, you should either upgrade or downgrade. Another focus area is a personalized user experience. This is not only about recommending this content because we have watched this and this, but also about building the right user experience for, for, for you as a customer, uh, using the right colors for the mood you are in, using the right uh, presentation for your viewing behavior. For instance, me as a sports fan, I sh when I open the application, I shouldn't be presented with a home screen filled up with reality, sh reality shows and other uh, things that's not relevant for me. I should be presented with a sports area, directly. And then if I want to watch more after finishing watching the game or something, I could navigate by myself to actually discover the content. And maybe I get some more sports recommendations when moving forward. The third focus area is addressable TV. Advertisements are an important part of the entire TV experience. And making the advertisements personalized would make the entire TV experience more uh, relevant for me as a subscriber and viewer. Good example is um, me myself. 
again. Uh, I have two teenage daughters. I shouldn't be seeing advertisements for uh, diapers. Uh, I could maybe see advertisements for makeup and clothes, because that's what my daughters like. But they do think that I'm um, colorblind and do not have a sense of fashion. <laughs> so uh, I should get I should get advertisements for what what is my interests for the era I live in uh, and for advertisement that makes it relevant for me to actually watch it. Uh, to make this happen, we are on a good way building a data platform. For a long period of time, we have been working on data collection. Today, we collect about 20, 25 gigabytes of behavioral data every single day. And soon also, we'll turn on uh, data, full data collection from all our connected set of boxes. Giving, giving us deep insights on how is content consumed on satellite broadcast, and making us able to actually connect that data with how does the customer also consume content on the TV everywhere ser service. That would be truly valuable in us in order to understand how is content consumed on our platform. Secondly is data enrichment. Yes, we do, we do work with automating or building solutions for understanding what kind of uh, household profile or what, what, this, what person in the household is actually watching TV right now. Uh, but we also want to work with solutions like Netflix are doing with the profile selector when you're opening the application. We also gather customer feedbacks and uses, use all this unstructured and structured data together with what we call, gather from the behavioral data to, to enrich, enrich it and create value when taking out personalization features. Using analytics and machine learning to build segments, analyze and adjust products according to our findings. Of course, also talking directly with customers so we don't walk blind on our data. And we believe that doing this, this is quite simplified to explain, but it's quite a complex process, will ultimately result in us being able to deliver a personalized customer journey, not only for addressable TV, but also for content recommendations and for subscription recommendations. We will continue to deliver on our customers' expectations and make sure that they have a relevant experience inside our services. But it's not only about staying relevant for the customers, it's also about staying for us, staying relevant for the broadcasters and content providers. We want to create value for broadcasters. We want to be assisting and making sure that they have enough revenue streams to produce the future content concepts. We, are not, uh, we do not produ produce our own content. So the content coming from content providers and broadcasters are very important for us. We want to help broadcasters increase their value of their inventory and monetize the advertisements played out on our services. As part of this, we absolutely want to give broadcasters access to the data we have for their respective content, letting them actually generate value by combining it with the data they have themselves. Of course, we will also enable TV and online video measurements from MMS and Contad. But we also, and I, especially for, for Norway, we want to be part of the future discussions, discussions for TV and online video measurements. And not only be told that you have to implement this so we get the data and can monetize our advertisements, because we can bring so much value to the table. 
And of course, we want to enable add in inventory for addressable TV on both our TV Everywhere services and on our Android TV box, which uh, our uh, chief product and digital officer, Tone Kronklöf, will talk about later today. And back to that we actually are bringing value to the table, other than just technology and our pipeline for content distribution. 30% of our customer base are using our TV Everywhere products. And we have a 40% year-on-year growth. And it's continuing also in 2018. And our customers are loyal. And the TV Everywhere customers are the most loyal customers we have. They have lower churn, they stay with us for a longer period of time, and 80% of them come back and use our TV Everywhere services every day. Nearly 50% watch more than one hour per day. And I want to, to show you a short example of how we are working with data. Uh, I'm not sure how good it will show up. This is a few of the experiments we are doing, and it's just a screenshot. When we put up this in our tools, we are actually able to navigate throughout the entire node grid and follow how do content relate to each other from a customer perspective. When I start watching on one channel, which channel are the next one I'm sapping to? And which channel are I sapping to after that? And can we build, use this to actually build patterns to, to understand how the customers are using our services, how they are consuming content, to actually optimize our personalization? So, our next steps. We will continue to develop our measurement for uh, behavioral data from all our products uh, to increase our understanding about how our customers are consuming content inside our platform. We will continue to develop uh, capabilities inside our data platform and make sure that it's accessible not only for us, but also for our broadcasting and content provider partners. And we will and we have committed to deliver addressable TV on uh, mobile devices, uh, iOS and Android, in 2018. And we will work on delivering for Android TV also in 2019. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions for John Espen? Hi, John. Hi, Wendy. Um, so you said 30% of your users uh, use the TV Everywhere solution. Do you know what time of day and who they're using it and what are they watching during that yeah. hour? We don't know the exact person uh, who's actually watching uh, when they're using the TV area service, but since we also have the household issues uh, uh, the Magnus, Magnus uh, mentioned. Uh, but it's possible to actually guesstimate who it is based on what they're watching, what time of day it is. Um, a good example is from from my family, I know that uh, my teenage daughters are watching TV when they get home from school from three to five, and they kind of watch teenage girls' programs, uh, Kim Kardashians and such. Uh, and I also know that in the second I come home, they turn off the TV and try to, try to tell me that they have done their homework. Uh, um, so using that kind of data, it's impossible to understand who's watching, yes. Jonas Ben, this is Hans from Altibox. 
You said um, that there is also a need to stay relevant for the broadcasters, which I totally agree upon. Um, can you say a little bit more about uh, the dialogues that you're having with the local broadcasters and the international broadcasters when but convincing them on the value you bring to the table with the solution you're presenting? I think uh, um, for, for mostly there have been positive dialogues on uh, when we're presenting what we are thinking. Uh, but it, it's, we still need to prove, it, prove that there's actual value here. Uh, so I, doing proof of concept together with uh, a few broadcasters uh, will help us prove that um, statement, that we are able to bring value to the table. I think there's another question at the back there. Yeah, hey John Espen, this is Andrew from PayWizard. Really enjoyed your talk. Hey, thank you. Your work is very similar to our thinking at PayWizard. But I had a general question for you, which is, yeah. um, as you look around the world at different providers, do, do, you, do you model yourself on, on someone you think is best in class in, in following the kind of journey that you're on? Best in class on? In, in terms of leveraging data to provide the personalized customer experience. I think there's, there's many people working, or many companies and businesses working with personalization. Uh, I believe that uh, Sky in the UK are doing a great job. Uh, I know BBC is also doing a great job, and NRK and TV2 in, in Norway have also done a great job on personalization and building uh, these kind of solutions. One of the things that surprised me when I was talking to John Espen yesterday, so when you think about Sky, which is absolutely a, a world leader in developing addressable TV ad solutions, for me, you know, it's pretty obvious one of the reasons they're doing that is because they've got skin in the game. They are uh, making a lot of money themselves out of deploying this solution. What really surprised me about what Canal Digital is doing is that you are taking no direct economic benefit from rolling out this solution. Mm. You're not taking any slice of the advertising revenue delivered. You're not making any incremental revenue, correct? Correct. So tell people why you're doing it. <laughs> Just altruistic. I think, I think Canada yeah. Digital is actually a charity on behalf of the broadcasters. Yeah, I think I think I, I look at myself as quite a idealistic person, uh, but it's uh, the first time somebody have called me that in a, in a business context. Uh, but of course, there's a, there's a commercial reason behind. Uh, of course, for us, it's about staying relevant for our broadcasting partners and content provider partners, making sure that they have their revenues they need and uh, in order to produce the content that our customers love. It's, it's an ecosystem. We all have to support each other in order to, to deliver to our subscribers and make sure that we are actually strong enough to withhold the competition from global players. And from Magnus beforehand, we mm. heard a lot about the, the, the standardization efforts happening mm. in Sweden. Is yep. that something you're interested to adopt or not? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and we are, of course, in discussions in Sweden. It's our second biggest, biggest market uh, and are part of the discussions there as well. Um, so, absolutely. So we could see you standardize on that platform across your, your regions? Yep. Even though you're going the Android route, you have a close relationship with Google? That's, that's clients. That's client development. Uh, standardizing on the back end is, uh, and I believe also Henke said so earlier today, uh, that we need to collaborate to standardize back end solutions in order to, to um, be competitive in a global market. 
in some of the other markets, um, broadcasters in particular have been somewhat um, uh, fearful about having a relationship with Google. Hmm. And yet you are forming quite a close relationship. Is that not uh, a concern to some of your broadcaster partners? Not that I've heard of. Uh, some of them are, of course, uh, not that positive to Google. Uh, but with Google, uh, and uh, probably Tony will mention this uh, later on as well, you get a lot of innovation power. It takes you very far in a short period of time. Uh, and that's the positive part of, part of it. But you should always be aware that Google is also a big global player with their own commercial interests in the market as well. So they could, uh, you, should, you should have a plan B in the back of your head. Absolutely. I think we've got a question here. Uh, just a short question relating to the uh, being very nice to broadcasters and providing them with the addressable media. Uh, given that Telia and Bonnier is in talks about merging or Telia acquiring Bonnier, would that change that perspective since then, then would have both of those ends? I don't know. That's, it's only speculations. Oh. Take it when it comes. I think we uh, are ready for a break now. And I think we're able, unless anyone tells me otherwise, keep it to 30 minutes, correct? Good. I want to thank all the speakers for keeping very much the time, keep getting us back to time. So great achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you.